Searching using subject headings isn't that hard and it will make your search so much better. We can find subject headings that match our topic in three different ways. We can start with a basic keyword search. You can copy and paste the title of an article you already have. Or you can search the subject heading thesaurus, which is basically a collection of all the subject headings in one database. We'll start with the first option, which is running a basic keyword search in order to track down some subject headings. Let's say I need to find articles on the topic of nursing student retention. Since this is a nursing related topic, I'm going to use the CINAHL database. All right, that brought almost 260 articles up. That's more than I'm going to go through. And this is only using a keyword search. If I want to make it great, I want to find some subject headings. To do that, we are just going to scan through the first page or two of the results that we've found. Unless you're really determined or have nothing better to do, you only want to do the first couple of pages. We want to find something that matches our topic and that also has subject headings. A lot of the newer articles don't yet have subject headings assigned. So we're looking for something that says subjects, but also sort of matches what we want. So you're looking to see if the subjects seem to match your topic and if the article title matches your topic. The subjects in number three seem to be a pretty good match, but the article title's not great because I'm not looking specifically for Aboriginal students in Western Australia. Article number four looks like it's a great match. And once you find an article and a list of subject headings that seem to match, go ahead and click on the article link. In EBSCO databases like CINAHL or PsycInfo or Sports Discus, they generally divide the subjects into major and minor. The major subjects naturally are the subjects that are the major focus of the paper, where the minor subjects, those, these things are mentioned or are part of the study, but aren't the major focus. The absolutely coolest feature here is that all you need to do is click on the link and bam, there are all the other articles which also have that subject heading. And of course, this is only one concept. A really good search always has two to three concepts. This is only focused on student retention. If I also want to add the concept of nursing students, I need to go back to that article. So all I need to do is click on the back button. So I'm going to go ahead and select the other subject heading that I'm interested in, and that is students, nursing. Okay, so obviously in a nursing database, any articles using nursing students as a subject heading are going to find a lot of stuff. So 13,000, more than I want. But now I want to combine the concept of nursing students and student retention. Another super awesome feature of a lot of these databases is they make this really easy. In almost all the EBSCO databases, all you need to do is make sure you've expanded the search history, and then you're going to see a list of all the searches you do. And from here, you can combine them. I want to combine the concept of student retention and students common nursing. And I want to search it with AND. AND is going to make sure the database only pulls up articles where both of these subject headings are used. Okay, now I'm down to 150 articles. This is less than my original keyword search and hopefully much more precise. Option two for finding subject headings relevant to your research topic is to copy and paste a perfect article that you already have to see what subject headings were used. Here's an article that I found when looking for research on stress and burnout in pediatric nurses. You can see it does have some subjects listed. I'm gonna go ahead and click in to the article. And this has some interesting subjects. It also has a really neat feature, the subheading. Woo, super exciting. A subheading is attached to a subject heading and it makes it more specific. So it's great because it will be more precise and it will bring up less stuff. Less stuff means less reading. If you want to search on the subheading, all you need to do is click on it. This is going to bring up the psychosocial factors related to pediatric nursing. And if you want, you can just browse through here and see what sort of other information is related. Or we can go back to the original article we started with and choose one of the other subject headings to combine it with any of these others. Option three for finding subject headings is to use what many databases call their thesaurus. In EBSCO databases, you're going to see it up here towards the top. CINAHL calls it their CINAHL headings and PubMed calls theirs MeSH. This is super extra 100% don't need to know it, but I do think it's kind of cool and it's really helpful if you get used to using it and learn to like using it. So we'll start up here with CINAHL headings and let's say I'm interested in articles on skin cancer. 
So I don't know what subject heading CINAHL uses for skin cancer, so I'm just going to type in the words that I know. And when you're searching the subject heading thesaurus or the CINAHL headings or whatever search tool you're in, stick to one concept at a time. It's going to really stress out the database if you do more than one, because this is a sub database within the larger one. Okay, CINAHL says, hey, great job searching on skin cancer, but actually we use the term skin neoplasms. And one of the things I really like about searching the subject heading database is that you can combine your searches and make it more specific by using subheadings. I'll show you the how to do that. So I want to search on skin neoplasms. I'm just going to click the little checkbox here. And as soon as I do that, I'll move across the right here and you can see all of these subheadings show up. And for this one, there's a lot. If you want to make your search more specific, especially on a really broad topic like skin cancer, you can check one of the subheadings here to make it more specific. So let's say I'm interested in the prevention and control of skin cancer. I can search right now if I want. This is going to search on skin neoplasms slash PC, which is prevention and control. But if I have another concept, which of course I do because I'm a sophisticated searcher, I can add it now by going down here where it says browse additional terms. So I'm going to say that I am focused on teenagers. I want to know how to prevent and control skin cancer in teenagers. So I'm going to type in teenager and see which term the CINAHL database it uses. And again, we are only searching their thesaurus, or their dictionary of subject headings. We are not searching the main database. So these are not articles, they're just terms. Uh, so for teenager, they say use adolescence. Okay, so I'll check it. I can choose a subheading. I don't want one right now. I just want to search all the subheadings. So now I have skin neoplasms, prevention and control, and adolescence. Again, I want to combine my searches using and because it's telling the database to search for both of those, not just either or. And let's search. And there's your search. It's truly that easy. Again, not 100% necessary to know, but if you can build your search in the subject heading thesaurus, when you come out to find the articles, it's going to be great. You want to use subject headings in your search because these will make your search fancy, give you better results, and it will save you time. Plus, it's really not all that complicated. So now you know how to find subject headings by doing a keyword search, searching by article title, and doing a search in a subject heading thesaurus. You are well on your way to being an awesome searcher.